Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome to the immunology lectures and in this lecture we are going to discuss mainly about the regulation of the complement system. So in our previous classes about the complement system, uh, we had discussed about the complement activation pathway. So how the complement is being activated, how the complement pathway is being activated and in this uh, complement activation pathway, we have learned that uh, at least three different pathways are active, the classical, the alternative and the lectin pathways. And if we see that the major uh, part of this complement activation pathway or the central part of this complement activation pathway is breakdown of the C3. So, I, I told in my last lecture as well that this complement proteins, they are always present in our system, but they are normally not doing any harm to us. They are not killing our self cells or our own cells, the healthy cells. They are not acting on the healthy cells or they are not killing our own cells. They are mostly active on the pathogens or the uh, foreign cells. So, they can recognize the foreign cells and the complement protein or the complement system as uh, we told uh, previously as well that it is uh, the effector part of the humoral immunity. So, one of the major effector pathways of the humoral immunity that is uh, in conjugation with the uh, antibodies, it can lead to the complement activation leading to formation of the membrane attack complex or it can lead to opsonization of the pathogens. So, but the complement system does not work on our own cells, it does not do any harm to us, although the proteins are there. So, why they do not get activated? Why? The question is why and how? So, of course, there is some tight regulation of this complement system, and there is a class of proteins a group of proteins rather which are known to function as regulators of complement. So, they work as the regulators of the complement and they are known as the regulators of complement activation or the RCA proteins. And these proteins are encoded uh, on a single location in the human chromosome number 1 and they are produced from there. And they work on the this complement pathway at different different stages of the complement pathway. Now, if we quickly look into the complement activation pathway, what we have uh, seen in the last lectures, what are the major major uh, significant uh, steps in the complement activation pathway? One of the significant step is activation of the C1 complex that is C1 forming C1 Q R2 S2 and then it gets activated and cleaves the C2 and the C4. And once this C2 and C4 are cleaved, then only they can form the corresponding cleaved product like the 4B, the 2A, these are formed and then only this 4B, 2A can associate. So, one of the important steps in the complement activation pathway is the initial cleavage of the C2 and the C4 by the C1 and for that you need the activation of the C1. So, one of the major steps where this complement uh, regulators can act or they can inhibit. So, these regulators you have to remember that these regulators are kind of inhibitors that means they inhibit certain steps of the complement activation pathway or regulate certain steps in the complement activation pathway. And how do they do that and which steps do they really act on? So, which are the major steps? One as I told is the C1 activation and the subsequent cleavage of C2 and C4 into 2A, 2B and 4A, 4B. Uh, 
The second major step is formation of the C3 convertases. You see the C3 convertases. The C3 convertases, there are two major C3 convertases that are formed. One is the 4B2A and the second one is the 3BBB. So, these are the two major C3 convertases that are formed. So, the second stage of regulation is the formation of the C3 convertase. That is, do not allow the C3 convertase to form, does not allow the C3 convertase to be formed. A third stage of regulation would be if the C3 convertase is formed, let us say the C3 convertase, C, uh, the, uh, the regulation at the initial stage is uh, somehow did not work and the C3 convertase is formed by association of 4B and 2A or 3B and BB. So, a third point of regulation is dissociation of this complex that is destruction or decaying of the C3 convertase so that the C3 convertase cannot work on the C3 and lead to subsequent cleavage of C3 into 3A and 3B. Another point of regulation is one of the major points of regulation is the regulation of formation of the membrane attack complex that is this part, the last part. So, here, so another point of regulation is do not allow, although you can have all these C3 convertase, C5 convertase, but do not allow the formation of the membrane attack complex so that the membrane attack complex is not formed. And a very tight control at the, you can understand a very tight control is required at this level of formation of the membrane attack complex because sometimes, not all, not all the times, usually as I told that the complement proteins, they assemble and activate uh, each other on the surface, on the cell surface, surface of the pathogen. But sometimes these complexes can also occur not on the cell surfaces. So, they can just occur uh, out, uh, outside the cell and these complexes if they form and they can form a C5, B6, 7 complex as we described. So, if that kind of a complex is already formed, then that complex, complex is competent enough to go and get inserted into a membrane and cause a hole or a pore or a channel in the membrane leading to the lysis of an innocent cell. That means, a cell which is not destined to lyse, which does not uh, is not required to lyse, that kind of an innocent cell can be uh, also lysed and that is no, also known as innocent bystander lysis. So, to avoid innocent bystander lysis, you can also have regulations or checkpoints at the level of formation of membrane attack complexes. So, we see at least there are 1, 2, 3, here 3 and here 4. So, at least 4 different areas or 4 different parts of the complement pathway where you can have checkpoints or regulations. Now, let us have a closer look into this regulatory pathways, how the complement system is actually regulated. So, we start from the very beginning in the classical pathway where we have this C 1 Q R 2 S 2 and there is, so this as I told or described them as regulators, regulators of complement activation. So, who are they and how they work? So, one of the very initial stages where these RCA proteins can work is on the C1 complement protein and one of the important RCA is the C1 INH or the C1 inhibitor. Now, the C1 inhibitor it binds to the C1 and inhibits the activation of the C1. So, what is the C1 or the C1 QR2S2 known to do? It is known to cleave 
the C2 and the C4 and produce C2A to B and C from C4, C4A and C4B. And then this 4B and 2A they associate to form C4B to A which is also the same from the lectin pathway. So, the first step of inhibition is the C1 INH or the C1 inhibitor also known as the C1 inhibitor, C1 inhibitor which basically inhibits the activation of the C1 and inhibits this step of cleavage of C2 of C2 and C4 into C2A to B or 4A 4B and thereby this can inhibit the subsequent steps of formation of C4 B2 A as well. So, this as we know is known as a C3 convertase. So, this is one of the initial checkpoints where you can actually inhibit the formation of a C3 convertase. Now, what is the C3 convertase in the alternative pathway? We know it is the C 3 B B B. How does it come from? It comes from the C 3 B. Here is the C 3 B and this C 3 B can associate C 3 B which can associate with factor B and factor D. and lead to the formation of C 3 B B B. Okay. So, this is another C 3 convertase. Now, as I told apart from inhibition at the level of C 1 that is at the beginning, there is also regulation at the stage of formation of the C 3 convertase. So, there are regulators which does not allow the formation of the C 3 convertase and what are they? So, one of such regulators is C 4 B binding protein as the name suggests it can bind to the C 4 B. So, one of them is C 4 B binding protein. or there is also MCP the membrane cofactor protein or you have the complement receptor 1 or the CR1. They all can bind to the C4B and does not allow it. So, it inhibits, inhibits its association inhibits its association with C 2 A. So, now this C 4 B which was supposed to associate with C 2 A to form C 4 B 2 A cannot associate with the C 2 A anymore and thus these proteins C 4, 4 B B P or M C P or C R 1 they can inhibit the association of C 4 B of C 4 B with C 2 A. So, it inhibits this particular process. Similar to this what we have seen in case of the classical pathway similar to this in the alternative pathway as well there are similar inhibitors which inhibits the step of association of the C 3 B. So, for example, the C R 1 or the MCP these are the common factors these are the common regulators along with that there is another factor H this also inhibits association of C 3 B with factor B. So, the C 3 B now cannot associate with factor B. And if it cannot associate with factor B, then it cannot form 
the C3 B B B. So, this cleavage is does not occur that means, the factor B cannot be cleaved into uh, factor B B and this C3 B B C3 convertase is not formed. So, these are the two major uh, these are the two major uh, steps of regulation where the C3 convertases are not formed. Apart from so, in this same stage of regulation when this C4 B binding protein or the MCP or the CR1, CR1 they can bind to this C4B they also activates another factor known as the factor I. The factor I is interesting what does it do? So, this factor I it basically it cleaves the factor 4. So, this is for example, C4B and this C 4 B is further cleaved into the 4 C 4 C and the C 4 D. So, C 4 B which was the membrane bound form it can now get cleaved into the C 4 C and the C 4 D the C 4 D still remains bound to the membrane while the C 4 C is the soluble part which lives or goes away after the cleavage it goes away thus it leaves the C 4 B inactive. So, the factor I is a factor which is primarily activated after binding of C 4 B B P or the M C P or the C R 1 to the 4 B and leading to cleavage of the C 4 B. So, the C 4 B is then cleaved into 4 D and 4 C where the 4 D is the bound part 4 C is the soluble part and this soluble part goes away. So, leaving out that the factor factor uh, B is quite inactive and it cannot further form the C 3 convertase. Similar to similar to this in case of similar to this in the case of C 3 as well this C 3 B here this C 3 B here can also be further cleaved by the factor I. So, the factor I here cleaves the C 3 B. So, the C 3 B is also membrane bound form we have seen previously it can get bound to the membrane. So, C 3 B which is initially in the membrane bound form now it gets cleaved into so this is the c3f and this is the ic3b so the ic3b is the insoluble fraction so it still remains bound to the membrane and the C3F is a small fraction that is the soluble part that gets cleaved and goes out. So, the C3B is broken down into the IC3B and the C3F. Now, this IC3B can be further broken down and it can be broken down into a soluble and an insoluble fragment. So, we have the C 3 C and the C 3 D G. Now, this D G part remains bound to the membrane while the C 3 C is the soluble part. So, now this C 3 B by the factor I it can be cleaved by this factor I similar to what we have seen in case of the C 4 B this C 3 B can also get cleaved by the factor I into I C 3 B and the C 3 F which the I C 3 B can further be cleaved into C 3 D G and the C 3 C and this cleavage leads to inactivation of the C 3 B. So, the C 3 B as we have learned from our previous lectures that the C 3 B is one of the central mediators of the complement activation pathway. It is one of the central molecules in the complement activation pathway 
Now, this C3B is completely destroyed or degraded and once this C3B is completely degraded or destroyed, it cannot further associate with the factor B or the factor D and form and lead to the formation of the C3BB. Now, this C3BB uh, or the 4B2A, either of these two C3 convertases, they converge at the formation of two different C5 convertases. So, they forms the C5 convertases, the C4B2A forms C4B2A3B and this forms C3BBB. C 3 B. Okay. So, these are the two C 5 convertases. So, now another checkpoint in this whole activation pathway is decaying or dissociating the C 3 convertases by itself and that is done usually by a factor known as the decay accelerating factor or the D A F the decay accelerating factor and this decay accelerating factor also works on the D A F can also work on the C 3 uh, the C 3 B B B convertase that is the convertase or the C 3 convertase from the alternative pathway. So, this D A F the decay accelerating factor is active on the C 3 convertases. So, they work on the C 3 convertases and they can quickly or very fast they can dissociate the 2 A from the 4 B or the B B from the 3 B. So, dissociation of this 3 B from the B B ensures that the C 3 convertase is not active anymore. Similarly, dissociation of 2 A from the 4 V ensures there is no further C 3 convertase available to convert C 3 or to decay or destroy uh, cleave C 3. So, this is another point of regulation where we have the decay accelerating factor or the D A F. So, now once uh, we have kind of uh, seen the checkpoints. Uh, starting from the C1 uh, to the C4, C2, C3 and mainly the C1, uh, one of the checkpoints is the C1, this initial part and the second checkpoint is in the formation of the C3 convertase and the, the third checkpoint is the stability of the C3 convertases. That means, uh, the C3 convertases are decayed. Now, once the C3 convertase, if, if they skip these checkpoints and there is formation of a C5 convertase, so what do they do? They cleave the C5 and the C5 is cleaved into 5A and 5B, C5A and C5B. So, it is cleaved into these two. Uh, molecules or the two fragments and C 5 B associates with C 6, C 7 to form the C 5 B 6 7 complex. Now, this C 5 B 6 7 is a complex which is already competent to go and lead to uh, lysis of the cells. C 5 B 6 7 can already because the 7, the C 7, the outer part of the C 7, it, it undergoes a uh, structural transition and leads to exposure of the hydrophobic patches. So, it can very easily go into the membrane and can lead to lysis of the cells. Now, if the complexes are 5B6,7 complexes are formed on the surface of the cell there is no problem or the target cell there is no problem, but if it is not formed on the surface of the target cell then what happens if it is it can travel it can travel to the next cell and can kill an innocent cell. So, there can be innocent bystander lysis. So, the next checkpoint or the point of regulation is how to uh, 
stop this kind of bystander lysis. So, there are complement regulators or complement proteins, regulator proteins which can bind to this. So, which can bind to this C 5 B 6 7 complex and inhibit its insertion into the cell membrane. So, one of them is for example, the soluble uh, serum protein or the S protein that can bind to C 5 B 6 7 complex and inhibit its insertion into the membrane. Now, if even if it skips this checkpoint, you still have the C 8 binding to it and forming C 5 B 6 7 8. So, C 5 B 6 7 8 and finally, you have C 9 or poly C 9 binding leading to C 5 B 6 7 8 9 which is actually the membrane attack complex or the MAC. So, this is the M A C. So, now there is one final more checkpoint where there are two major proteins one one is known as the homologous restriction factor or the HRF another is M I R L also it is also known as the membrane inhibitor of reactive lysis. So, membrane inhibitor of reactive lysis. So, now this MIRL or the HRF they can bind to this this complex the C 5 B 6 7 complex bind to the C 5 B 6 7 8 complex and inhibits inhibits binding of the C 9. So, this inhibits the binding of the C 9. So, this MIRL or the HRF the homologous restriction factor or the MIRL that is the membrane inhibitor of the reactive lysis these both of these two proteins they binds to C 5 B 6 7 8 complex and inhibits thereby inhibits the binding of the poly C 9 and formation of the membrane attack complex. So, there is no formation of the membrane attack complex. So, these are mostly the different stages where these regulators of complement activations or the RCA proteins they act upon. So, quickly I go through or um, revise this whole thing. So, the, the there are the different checkpoints the first checkpoint is here at the level of C 1, it inhibits the activation of the C 1 and cleavage of the C 2 and the C 4 downstream. The second checkpoint usually is in the classical pathway, it is the binding to the C 4 B, there is a cleave product of C 4. So, C 4 B binding protein or the MCP or the C R 1, they binds to C 4 B and inhibits its association with the C 2 A. So, that this C 3 convertase that is C 4 B 2 A is not formed. Similarly, this is also part of the second uh, checkpoint of the second regulation that is the C R 1 or the M C P the membrane uh, cofactor protein or the factor H they bind to C 3 B and inhibits the association of C 3 B with factor B. So, that C 3 B cannot interact or um, uh, cannot associate with the factor B and the finally, inhibition of C 3 B B complex. Now, apart from doing this, apart from doing this both of them they initiate a third process that is they activate this factor I, they activate the factor I. So, here and here as well they activates the factor I 
which can cleave the C4B that is the cleave product that is the one of the main mediators or one of the main, main components of the C3 convertase. So, factor I can cleave C4B into C4C and C4D so that there is no further C4B available for the formation of 4B2A. Similarly, in the alternative pathway the factor I can cleave C3B into C3F and IC3B. IC3B is further cleaved into C3C and C3DG and so by that the factor I can cleave or completely uh, uh, destroy this C3B and inhibits or does not allow the formation of this C3BBB complex. But what if this C3BBB complex has already been formed or the C4B2A complex has already been formed? That has been taken care of this fourth step or the fourth checkpoint which is the decay acceleration factor here and here in both the cases. The decay acceleration factor usually is responsible for quick decay of or dissociation of 4B from 2A or 3B from BB. So, once this uh, C3 convertases like 4B2A or 3B BB is formed, this decay acceleration factor can dissociate the 4B from 2A or the 3B from BB and thereby inhibiting the C3 convertase step. So, it does not allow the C3 convertase to be formed. Further to this, we have two more steps in the process of the membrane attack complex formation. One step uh, involves immediately after formation of 5B. So, immediately after formation of the 5B, we have 5B67 complex and this complex is a very uh, important complex in a way that this 5B67 can get inserted into the cells and can lead to uh, innocent bystander lysis. So, S protein one of the soluble serum proteins. So, the S protein it can bind to this 5B67 complex and thereby inhibiting it inhibiting this complex to get inserted and how do, does it do that? So, the after this S protein leads to a hydrophilic transition. So, usually this C7 is hydrophobic and that that is what favors it in its insertion into the uh, membrane. So, now it this binding of this S protein leads to a hydrophilic transition. So, that it cannot get accommodated in the hydrophobic environment of the membrane. So, it does not get inserted. So, this is another checkpoint number 5 and finally, in the last step you have the checkpoint where these two proteins that is the homologous restriction factor the HRF or the MIRL that is a membrane inhibitor of reactive lysis. These two factors they can bind to the C5B678. 5B678 is the penultimate step of the formation of membrane at a complex. Now, these two proteins they can by they are expressed by the expressed on the surface of the host cells um, and they can bind to uh, C5B678 and thereby inhibiting or restricting the binding of the C9 to this 5B678. And if C9 cannot bind to 5B678, it would not form this poly C9 and the membrane attack complex. So, the membrane attack complex will not be formed and this is the sixth or the final regulatory steps uh, by the complement regulators or the regulators of complement activation. So, uh, in today's lecture we have learned briefly about the regulations uh, that are uh, there in the complement activation pathway and how these regulators of complement activation they regulate the different steps in the complement activation pathway and thereby does not allow the complement uh, proteins to just get activated and destroy our own cells or work on the self cells. So, that is all for uh, today's lecture and we have mostly completed or finished with the uh, complement proteins and uh, I hope you have understood the uh, complement proteins uh, by far uh, you have understood uh, the complement proteins. So, uh, we will finish the complement chapter here.
and you can go through any standard textbook what which has been uh, referred to in our uh, website. You can consult any of the textbooks and read them and I hope things get clearer uh, to you and thank you very much.